In this video, we do a numerical calculation for how the vapor pressure of water changes with temperature. All right, remember that the vapor pressure is the pressure of a gas at equilibrium with a liquid. And that vapor pressure depends on temperature. The hotter the liquid is, uh, the larger the vapor pressure at equilibrium with that liquid. Okay, so generally, uh, the vapor pressure curves have this shape. This is how the vapor pressure uh, for a particular liquid changes with temperature. And again, there's a magic point in this curve where um, the vapor pressure reaches the atmospheric pressure. So that will be general, generally 1.0 atmosphere. And when that happens, here we, ha we have what we call the normal boiling point of the liquid. Normal boiling point. For, so for example, for water, uh, we know that water at one atmosphere of pressure uh, it boils at 100 Celsius. Okay, so that is your normal boiling point. Now the question is how do we um, calculate that change in pressure with temperature in a quantitative manner? What we have said is that when you have a liquid to gas uh, equilibrium, we have explained this in a prior video, so you can check that. Uh, notice that the equilibrium constant for this process is simply the pressure of the gas, but if this is at equilibrium, then that will be the vapor pressure uh, uh, of that liquid. All right, and then we know how equilibrium constants change with uh, temperature. Right, it's just the enthalpy of the process, uh, 1T2 minus 1T1. Okay, so the equilibrium constant at a temperature T2 uh, is related to the equilibrium constant at temperature T1 through this expression that depends on the enthalpy. If we apply that expression to a liquid to gas phase transition, then what will happen is that now these equilibrium constants are simply the vapor pressures of the liquids at the two temperatures. And then this enthalpy right here is simply the vaporization enthalpy, which is the enthalpy controlling that phase transition. Right, so let's do a numerical uh, example to see, to see how this expression uh, works out. So suppose that the pro a problem is asking us to calculate what the vapor pressure of water would be at 80 Celsius. Okay, given that uh, the enthalpy of vaporization of water and this is going to be a molar quantity, uh, is equal to uh, 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Right, so uh, what we have to do is uh, find uh, here what this P2 is, where 2 would be the temperature that we're interested in, 80 Celsius. So we know that that uh, is going to be equal to 353 Kelvin, which is the same thing as 80 Celsius. But then the problem is that uh, we don't know what P1 and T1 is. Notice that in order to be able to do this, you would need to know the vapor pressure at a particular temperature. Okay, and the problem is not giving us that information. We do have the enthalpy vaporization, which is simply 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Right, but still, uh, we don't know how uh, what this P1 and T1 is. We need to know what the vapor pressure is at the different temperature. Well, it turns out that for these type of problems, you can uh, you actually always know uh, one point, right? And that is the normal boiling point. That is, the definition of the normal boiling point is uh, the point or the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid equals the external pressure or the atmospheric pressure, right? So in this case, uh, what we actually know is that this reaches one atmosphere, which is the external pressure for water, the normal boiling point is 100 Celsius, which will be 373 Kelvin. Right, so again, notice that the normal boiling points of most liquids are known, or all, of all liquids are known. So you always have that, that information, right? If, if you know what the normal boiling point of a liquid is, then you know that, te that temperature that is the normal boiling point, but then the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. That is the definition of the normal boiling point. And from there, then you can go on and solve uh, for the vapor pressure at a different temperature. Right, so we now have all the data that we want, and then it turns out that uh, here, when you calculate the vapor pressure at 80 Celsius, that would happen to be 0.48 atmospheres. Right, so uh, notice that there's a huge decrease in the uh, vapor pressure with temperature. Notice that you're only decreasing the temperature by 20 Celsius, but the vapor pressure goes down by more than half which actually tells you that this uh, dependence 
is uh, uh, exponential, and then you have that ultimately that is turned into this logarithmic relationship between uh, the pressure and the inverse of temperature. Okay. All right, so in this video, we actually have uh, uh, carried out a numerical calculation for how the vapor pressure of a liquid changes with temperature.